Welcome to our world. We are in the process of the big melt, which still means there's lots of stitching going on because, I mean, it was probably easier to get out in the snow than it is out into this stuff. But um, we have lost several inches of, of snow to the dripping melt. I, I heard a statistic which 68%, I can't believe that, of homes have filed a claim for leaking from all of the snow melting in the Central Oregon area. I can't believe that number, but I do know that there's a lot of them. But come on up to the sewing room. I've got something to show you. This is gonna be short and sweet, but I had to share it with you. I um, went in to bend and because this has been on my to-do list uh, with a you know a handful of you are also doing it, I needed to get all the background fabrics. And so I went to so many quilts and decided to pick out backgrounds that are flannel. So this will be an interesting project and I I, I do love the colors that I've chosen for this buttermilk basin project. And because this is flannel, I'm definitely gonna be using my SF 101 as a backing to keep that flannel from stretching. So I'm gonna prep these blocks to take on the road. And I got started on one of my goal lists and that was Sylvia Pippin's Coral Reef Block of the Month. I've never used um, colored sashiko thread. I've only used white. So this is kind of fun to do this. So I have to get this block done uh, this month as one of my goals. So maybe we'll see if that'll happen. And then a box arrived. And I know what it is, but I'm gonna show you. I hadn't been able to get up to Fabric Depot, which is where I get my batting. And then I saw that Connecting Threads was having a sale. So, with free shipping. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it that way. So let's see. So, this is the batting that I use a lot of. It is Hobbs 8020 Fusible. And it has a fusible texture on both sides, kind of sticky. And so I iron it first with the top down, and then I spread it out, put the backing on top, and then I steam iron it down, then I flip it over and steam iron the other side, and it stays together while I quilt. And since I'm going to be using that Sweet 16, I thought this is the perfect uh, batting for that. So I ordered a bunch of baby size, and I can't believe it, I ordered a queen size too. And so this is going to keep me in trouble for, for a, a while, because uh, I have several things to quilt. So next time you'll be seeing me quilt on the Sweet 16, which is, <laughs> that's going to be an adventure. But we're going to give it a shot, and uh, we'll share that with you. Okay, so we're going to start layering a baby quilt, and Emily is here to start quilting the baby quilt she was working on that you saw before with the owl on it. So these, this is that batting I showed you, the Hobbs Fusible, and I have bought, uh, as I told you before, a queen size one and several baby quilt size because I use a lot of these. So it comes in this little plastic bag and it's fusible on both sides. So we're going to take it out of there. Me. Yes. <laughs> now we have to unroll it okay. and it, it feels kind of sticky and stiff, but it's um, it's because it has the fusible on it. So we're just gonna gently peel that all apart. And we have the back of her quilt um, on the ironing board. And 
she's already ironed that back nice and smooth. So you see how we're, it's kind of stuck to itself. We don't want to stretch it, but we want to get it opened. So we're peeling this thing. Let me move this out of the way. And here's, let's see, there's, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So now that we, you see, it comes out and it's kind of all scrunched up and wrinkled. I'm just going to gently pull that apart. And then we have our back all smoothed out here. And then, Emily, we're going to line the top of this to the top of your okay. back. And see how nicely that... It's because it's a baby standard baby quilt size. It it's going to fit the back. So now we need the front of your quilt. Okay. This is one of those tricks because I'm always time crunched to not have to pin. Uh, because you know, when we do quilts, we want to pin uh, like a fist's width apart, and it takes a bazillion pins to layer before you can quilt. But this way, I don't have to do that part. So now we're going to kind of look at the back, and we're going to make sure we have enough on either side, and then we're going to get the top up to at least an inch or two just to give ourselves a little wiggle room. We measured our back so we know that we have more than enough. And um, if you come around this way, you can see how it's draped off of the side of my ironing board and it, there's more than enough in the baby uh, size batting. I have to tell you, I will save that bottom piece and I'll cut it into six or eight inch squares depending on the amount I have because I'll use it on those fringed flannel quilts where you need the individual squares. So now you get to iron. All right. And so you're just going to iron and smooth out as you go. And we're going to iron the top. And you kind of just go to the edge. You don't have to iron all the way off onto the batting. And this top then will stick to that batting. Hmm. So we're just, just going to grab it and um, move it gently up. And kind of smooth it out. And I can feel like I can feel a bump there, so I'm just going to look at what that bump is. Oh, and it's the batting. Got a little tucked, so I'm just going to pull, pull that out. And then straighten that out. And when you're smoothing this, you can kind of feel if there's a wrinkle in, on the backing. This was a great background for that. Mm -hmm. So now we've got one side already adhered down to the batting, so we're just going to flip it over. And the back side would have gotten a little bit stuck as we ironed, and it will have a few wrinkles in it, but we're going to iron those out. So now we're going to iron the back side, and you're just going to go iron down. Okay. The great thing about this is if you get a wrinkle, you can lift the material up off the batting and smooth it out and then stick it back down. But what I can tell you is pinning a quilt can take an hour or more unless you have a lot of friends helping you. And this is going to take us 10 minutes. So 
So our next step will be to uh, kind of trim it up a little bit. It's all stuck together, all ready for quilting, as you'll see here in a moment. The last little bit is done. And we have a quilt here that is ready and layered. And that was less than 10 minutes. So we're going to trim this up just because we don't need all that bulk. And then we're going to start the quilting. So we're giving the Sweet 16 a test run. It's a learning curve for both of us. But um, what I do know is that I have it on manual mode now. If I wanted to use regulated, I would use this little regulator disc with my quilt. But I need to practice a lot more and I'm, I'm kind of used to the manual um, quilting. So I'm going to just keep going with that. And um, what we're trying to do right now is just kind of stitch, kind of get it adhered together stitch. But as you can see, um, my quilt is already layered and fused. So um, we did that and I'm just, that's why I love that Hobbs 8020 fusible batting. And um, they, it comes in king, queen, double, twin, baby size. And I usually buy uh, the baby quilt size and a queen size that I can cut up if I want. So here I go. So we're almost done. I'm quilting the border in a free motion leaf pattern and then Emily's been making the binding mm -hmm. and she'll be attaching the binding and the binding is out of this pretty little blue uh, blue leaf pattern and and then she'll have her quilt ready to send off to a special person that uh, has a baby. So that's what we did today. We quilted all day because it's snowing outside again, and we're over it, aren't we? Over it. Yes, we're very over it. We're very over it. We're so over it. <laughs>